Here's a technique that uh, I use every once in a while that doesn't have much um, documentation on the net. Uh, I CNC cut glass and mirrors. Uh, if you need a piece of glass or a mirror in a, in a shape, especially if it has curves involved, uh, you will not be able to cut it with a typical score and break type method. I mean, at least not for curves like this. So this piece of glass started off as a plain uh, rectangle, and I cut it using a CNC mill and a diamond burr tool. So the biggest trick with, uh, with milling in general, but especially milling glass, is that uh, clamping is, is the trickiest part. So I use this jig right here. Uh-oh, I break my mirror. Use this jig right here, and the glass gets put inside here and shimmed so that it can be held in a horizontal direction and vertical direction without actually uh, pinching it. Obviously, if we took a, a conventional uh, milling hold-down clamp and tightened it on the glass, it would just break instantly. So this has rubber pads on the underside. So the glass sits in here, gets shimmed up vertically and horizontally, and then I just screw this on and the rubber pads just keep the glass from lifting. Uh, but during the cut, there's not much lifting force because the diamond burr is uh, flat. It doesn't have flutes. So the, the, two, the milling machine isn't trying to pull the glass up, but this just makes sure that it doesn't come up. Of course, you'll need cutting fluid. And I like using a, a soluble oil. Actually, I use it for pretty much everything. Aluminum, sometimes plastic, and, and definitely glass. And that keeps the cutter tool cool and also keeps the glass from heating up at the point where it's being cut and uh, breaking due to thermal expansion. The feed rate is quite low. I uh, usually program the file for about three inches per minute and then slow it down on the control panel on the front of the machine to maybe like one inch per minute and use the dial to kind of you know judge it up and down. This particular mirror is brutally expensive. Um, I got this from Edmund Optics and it's actually a custom item. It's a cold mirror, meaning that it's transmissive to infrared and reflective to visible light. And if you think their prices are bad for stock items, just wait until you order something custom from them. So <laughs> going with the absolute slowest feed rate possible is really the best plan since uh, cracking one of these would be an expensive mistake. Also, I don't uh, plunge at all into a mirror or piece of glass, or at least I never have in the past. Um, what I do is I set up the jig so that it has a pocket on the outside of the cut, so the cutter tool can go down into the pocket and then cut across and then come back up, so it doesn't actually have to plunge through the glass. I think the cutter tip itself would probably not be ideally suited for that. It would really be better to use a, um, an actual glass drill bit. Uh, instead of a carbide or instead of a diamond burr. As you can see the edge finish is really quite nice. It's not sharp to the touch like it would be after scoring and breaking and you can round off the corners like that quite nicely. There's no chipping on the um, reflective surface. This is a first surface mirror so the uh, I mean, you could actually look at it as a mirror from this side but as you can see there's a double image. So when using it on this side it's um, the first surface is reflective, so there's no ghost image there. The CNC machine itself is a Bridgeport Series 1 uh, R2E3 with a Boss 8 controller. So this is uh, quite a vintage machine here. It's kind of an old yeller, uh, but I, I shouldn't insult it because it served me quite well over the years. I've uh, made lots and lots of parts with this machine. And the, the iron is um, quite good, probably better than a lot of modern import machines. The things you know, the table ways and everything are very solid. Uh, I use some old CAD CAM software because I, I don't have enough money to afford SolidWorks or MasterCAM. Um, and the machine is controlled through a serial port from an old DOS program on my uh, garage laptop out here. And I've been using the same setup for a long time, five, six years or something. And uh, eventually I'll upgrade. I was thinking of, of putting the Ajax uh, servos and controller on this machine, but I really want to keep the iron because it's just amazingly solid. Alright guys, see you next time. Bye.